recording on my computer. Okay, great, Joseph. Okay, so this is your your website. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man. Mm -mm. Okay, so um, we are here and we are going to our back office. I'm going to show you um, here. Let's go over. We're going to log in. Now, just to let you guys know, if you were audited, we're going to talk about this because auditing and record keeping goes hand in hand. If you were audited and somebody asked you, uh, wh what is your website? Oh my goodness, that let me know you're not on your website. You guys are in business. Go to your website so that you can know it like the back of your hand. Your computer not gonna blow up. Your phone is not gonna blow up. You can save it. Uh, you can you can go up in on your computer. You can bookmark your um, website. Uh, even on your phone, you can save everything to where you can get to it. Make it like add it to your home screen so you can click. And not only that, you guys. Just in case you did not know, you have an app. You have a My Econ app, okay? You have uh, an app for the entire business, and you have an app for the cash flow manager. Go to your app store and search for it, download it, and you have access to go in at any time, and you have videos to where you can be sitting down in Jamaica on a boat and turn around and present. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to say a word. The videos are there. Okay, so let's do this. I think I just somehow, uh, I don't know how I got, who, who do I have? Let me, let me get this. Okay, so I went off of my website. So I'm going to go to my website because I know my login information is there. Okay, so I'm going to intentionally go in the back office. I'm going to choose my econ associate because common knowledge is, right? I'm an associate, I'm not a customer. I'm gonna use my login information just in case you are new and you don't know. Your login information starts with the front end of your uh, website link. This is a website link, okay? You need to know your website link. Then the password that you created, you put that in, okay? Now, I'm moving through the back office. Even me, it, a lot of stuff has changed <laughs> in this back office. Okay, so we're going to go to tools. Everybody see the tools? Send me some likes, send me some hearts. Yes, no, maybe so. Um, comments, okay? So we're going to go to tools. And when we go to tools, we're going to see all this great stuff. Matter of fact, we're going to come back. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the compensation but we're also going to go in here and the cash flow strategist because you guys, you got to get this. You know, let me just talk from experience. One of the most disappointing things about a leader is to teach anything that they believe in and you do not get the benefits from the teaching. Okay. Let me tell you what I mean. I've been in this business 14 years and in the business, we have taught tax, money management, we have taught credit repair, investing, and I guarantee you, I'm getting the same questions from the same people who just like hanging out with me. Your credit is still bad. You have no clue on how to write your deductions off. Um, you don't operate your business. You haven't made any investments. And so this is the year uh, of release, okay? We have to be released from those who decide that this is just a good place to hang out. We're not telling you to release hanging out, but you want to want financial freedom and financial freedom requires work, especially when you've gone down and that stuff has gotten on your nerves and in your emotions and in your spirit until you need a lifting. And that's what I love about my econ is that we got enough mentors to lift you all around spiritually, physically, and naturally, okay? Because our uh, business was actually built on Christian principles, okay? Now, cash flow strategists, that's what I'm talking about. We're gonna get to that because every one of you need to be fluent with these tools and 
cash flow manager, cash flow strategist, your calculators, know your cash flow success, use your contact information. You have a real business going on. That is if you are operating your business to build a team and residual income. Okay. So let's go to cash flow manager. Cause we want to talk about record keeping really quick. Like I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I hope I'm doing pretty good for y'all. Okay. So I'm going to create a new, okay. Just for the sake of you, let's create a new one. So I'm going to create a new file. You're going to notice you got business and you have home. Business is for your record keeping. Somebody put uh, put that on there, type that in there so people who are looking can go back and see it, guys. Business, if you select business, it is for your tax records, okay? If you select home, it is for your home budgeting, okay? Business is your tax records. Home is for budgeting. And we're going to do some budgeting training, okay? So now, this is a sample of 128-2019. And we're going to save the file. That's all we did, okay? Now, let's start with the income. Okay, so most of the information in your cash flow manager is defaulted. I love the fact that it's defaulted to the point that if you didn't even know a deduction was available to you, you'll be able to see it and you'll see that in a moment. Right now we are in the enter new income, okay? Enter new income. So this is income, we're gonna put commission. We're only gonna talk about my econ. When you got advanced advanced training, um, we'll talk on something else later. But right here, we're only talking about my econ. Hey Tyler, we're only talking about my econ and we're talking about you in business with my econ. Okay, and if you're not active, incidentally, you need to renew for all this good training. Uh, that's what that's what you need to do. Okay, now we'll talk about this some other time. The custom income types. But those of you who can study and go look at the other videos, if you need to add a different type of income, you can press this button, and you can always add an additional tab over in this drop down menu. Okay. Now, your dates, if you notice, are defaulted. However, you have a date selector, okay? You can go up or down on your date. I'm not going to do that. You go play with it. You can go in here. You can erase your date, and you can put in another date, okay? But we're going to use 28. You, it's real workable. So just say, for instance, I got a payout of $100, and it's going to ask me who. That's not talking about you, because I want you to keep in mind that the, this is your website, so you are the who already. This is gonna talk about who the transaction is with. MyEcon Incorporated, what was it? Um, uh, three associate enrollments, okay? Where? Okay, we're talking about MyEcon, Snellville, Georgia, okay, uh, direct deposit. Y'all get that? Now, the more specific you are about your information, the better your records look if you were pulled for an audit. So if it were a check, you might put uh, number 2055 check uh, given, uh, uh, mailed by my econ, or you put number, uh, you can put week, week seven, uh, commission C back office. Okay. Don't have to write a book, but you can give little simple directions. Let me know you understand that. Check your, uh, hit like, say something, you know, laugh something. Let me know you there. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So my stuff don't like, I want to move. Okay. Now you have a place, even as you do on your phone, you can take pictures. You can actually upload receipt information that you choose to upload from your computer if you scanned in. Just say, for instance, you did get a commission check or you wanted to take a, a screenshot of that uh, check, that payout that you got. You know, you get those emails that say my cash flow increased uh, with my econ cash flow increase. You want to take a picture of how much? Guess what? You can upload it right there. Okay. 
Thanks, Vincent. You can upload it right there. Now, recurrence, I like this. You can do weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually. So we're just gonna put weekly as a test. Now, since this is the 28th, we're gonna go over and select, uh, and I'm just using a date selector. You can type this in. It's got the 28th in there, bam. Oh, that was a month, oops. <laughs> So we don't want a month. We, we said it's weekly, so we're gonna go back, sorry. And we're gonna go over to February, okay. And the next Friday, okay. Now we're gonna save that entry, bam. Now, look at that. You're building a spreadsheet that's going to cover you in the event that you are audited. And I like this because some of you are so worried about being audited. We got you covered. You just need to do it properly, okay? I go up here and I wanna view, before we get to expenses, I wanna see both income and expenses and compare. I'm also going to check categorize because we want to categorize our deductions, which are AKA expenses, okay? We're gonna do that next. So let's go over here. We don't have to go back all the way out to the dashboard. We can go right over here to this little green plus sign and we're gonna push the green plus sign. Now, we're going to first, okay, when you're setting this up for the first time, you wanna to go to your cash flow manager monthly fee, okay? Again, you got a custom expense type. If there's an expense that is not listed in the category, go ahead and add it. Hey, Miss Lambert. Oh, and remember I told you that in the drop sleeve, You'll be able to see things that you didn't know you could write off. I love it. So just take a look at all the things that is available to you as a business owner to actually record to build deductions from, okay? So we're recording our monthly fee because we don't want to go inactive. Our business is not operating. If your business is not operating in the month, this month, you cannot write those deductions off because your business is down. If you are canceled, let's get this straight. I get people calling me because they will not stay active in a business. I'm talking about two ways. You will not pay your $34 and you will not be a part of the community to learn, whether it's on the internet or whether it's go to a meeting, okay? You will not stay involved. And so what happens around tax time, people want the they want to eat the good of the land and they haven't done the work to qualify themselves. And so I get this all the time. So the best thing for you to do is you need to go and start with your cash flow manager monthly fee. And that's the first thing you also need to do in your home budgeting. So you won't be, um, so it won't be where you can't pay it. So we're gonna put the 34, what is it? 34.95. Cool. Once again, I believe y'all got that. It's gonna be My Econ Incorporated right? What is it? Website licensing fee. Where? I'm going to put Snailville, Georgia, and then in the notes, I'm going to write online, uh, what do you call it? Um, ACH deduction. I think that's what you call it if I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to, you actually get these receipts given to you. If you ever go to your uh, back office, you actually get a receipt every time this is paid. Again, if you get a receipt and you want to take a picture or save that receipt and upload it to this for proof, because every little bit of proof helps you, you can choose file, browse any of your uh, receipt images that you're saving in your folder, and you can upload it, okay? We don't have any mileage on this one because this is, now this is recurring. Remember, this is gonna be monthly. So now we're gonna to go to the date selector, choose it for monthly, and then we're gonna save. Voila, you are building a spreadsheet. Uh, let's go put in some common deductions so I can show you guys. Now, for every created deduction, every expense that you have, that you want to write off a business, it must be linked to business activity. What do I mean, Ms. Pace? I mean, you must say what proves that this activity was either ordinary or necessary for you to do business. So 
let's go here. Uh, let's go to Mills, okay? Entertainment is out, but you can be creative, okay? You just won't put entertainment. Let's just deal with meals. So I did have a $100 meal, and you do need a receipt for a $100 meal. You do not need a receipt for meals up to $75, okay? Now, I went to Red Lobster, okay, and I had a meal. Okay, where? Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Now, met Lou Lambert, uh, discussed planning conference, or let's see, discussed uh, business meeting uh, agenda. Bam. Now, on this event, I had to drive, okay? So you can put up to three vehicles in business with you. So my primary vehicle is what went. Now, what happened is you have to record your odometer reading, beginning and the end. So one, two, two, oh, oh. That's my odometer reading. I went 100 miles. So let's go one, two, three, oh, oh. Now, I'm going to record my business miles, 100. Now, the reason that this is like this and you have to record your business miles because you have to keep up or you don't have to, but but is a way to uh, keep up with your records and accounting uh, so that you'll know the percentage that you operate in business because it's not 100%, but those of you who have full-time jobs, you cannot pull that off with 100%. But you have personal miles, you have commuter miles and you have business miles. Somebody write that on here for me, okay? You got personal, commuter, and business. Personal, commuter, I might not be saying it right. It's C-O-M-M-U-T-E-R and business, okay? Things that you do that do not pertain to business, of course, are personal, okay? Commuter miles are generally those miles that you are operating just say you're going to work. You might carpool or anything else. And so those are commuter miles. And then business miles is when you are operating your business with the intent to make a profit, okay? So you have to make a distinction on your business miles when it comes to recording and submitting them, okay? So this is not something that occurs all the time. So I had two entries in here. I had the amount that I paid for my meal. I had the mileage to and from the business meeting, okay? All right, so we're gonna save it, save the entry. Now, guess what? Take a look at this beautiful spreadsheet. All right, let's go to something like, okay, so I can help you guys on some things. Okay, let's go to supplies. Okay, we bought supplies today. A lot of people miss that opportunity to record supplies. Supplies would include your paper towel, toilet tissue, uh, alcohol, antibiotics. Listen, when you record this, do not just put first aid kit in there. When we give an example, we will say, uh, you have to have, a, every business has a first aid kit, but there are things that go inside the first aid kit, okay? So what goes inside the first aid kit is alcohol, peroxide, antibiotic cream. Um, what else? What else do we have? Uh, did I say band aids? Uh, different things. You know what goes in there. So you operate a business that just happened to be from home. So I went to Walmart. Okay. So when it says um, what, I have a receipt, and that receipt is going to have uh, tissue, uh, paper towel. Towels, um, antibiotic. That's if it's a necessary expense. Antibiotic cream. I'm just putting that in there. Okay. Now, Walmart where? Monticello. If you really want to get good, you look on that receipt and know that it's store uh, number 306. I'm just saying, I don't know what a store number is, but I like to, you know, show that I'm really trying to work business properly. Okay. So I put, um, uh, uh business office supplies and replacement for 
business, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what do you call it? I just said it, first aid kit. Okay, all right. Now, at the same time, remember, I went to Walmart, right? I'm in car one. No, I just went to car two. So we're going to go to the odometer reading. Car two has 13,000 whatever miles. Let's say we got a brand new car. Okay, and this is the part-time vehicle. So I'm going to put 14 on there. And I only drove 20 miles there and 20 miles back. So I got 40 miles out of, uh, that's a total of 200 miles that I drove on there. I only have 40 miles out of that. That was business. Okay, so I'm going to do save entry right here. Bam, look at there. Now look down here. You've got, you already got more deductions than you have total income. However, that's for another training, but that doesn't mean that you got, you, you're not taking deductions to have a loss. You are building deductions to lower your taxable income that lowers your tax liability. Okay, y'all got that? Because a lot of people think that the reason what we're teaching them is to always be in the hole. That is not the purpose of this. This the purpose is to lower your tax liability. But before you do that, you must lower your taxable income. Y'all, excuse me. My grandbaby woke up and she's got to be satisfied. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go out, go back up here. And there's another expense I want to go to, and then we're going to be done for the night. I hope you guys are learning. If you have any questions, start putting them on there now. If you have any comments, start putting your comments on there now as I go to this last. No, it's not going to be the last one. I see something else that's important I need to share with you. Okay, so wages. You have seen in your back office that RS publication, I think it's 535 or 505. Go back there and look. Um, that you have the opportunity to actually write off uh, a certain amount of money for hiring your children in business. According to RS, you don't have to pay Social Security or FICA on those children up to 17 years old who are in business working for you. And you can pay up to uh, $12,000 uh, for them to work for you. And if you're married, you can go up to $24,000. Okay, now per child that you put in business, you must have it set up right. We will do a training to show you how to set it up right. It's really not hard. Some tax, I did put my girl uh, on there for y'all to get on her call, but even in that, uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, when tax accountants are that, they'll take you on into it. But there are some things we've done. We've gone through audits and we have passed. The biggest thing is you need to have a paper trail for those children and start at the age of six, okay? Then you have to have pay them a reasonable amount. It might say up to $24,000, but let's not be ridiculous. Are you paying your son or daughter who is six years old, $24,000. So what you pay them has to be within reason. The, the, the knowledge behind that or the strategy behind that is to process or use the process of income shifting where your children are, you're buying things for them, you're buying clothes, you're, you're having entertainment for them, uh, school clothes and supplies and these things, giving them allowance. The goal here is to take that allowance and turn it into a business deduction because they work for your business. Now, I don't know about you, but my kids really work for my business. If some of y'all are friends that are on there, I've got, uh, I've got a son, Gabriel, and Daniel, and my daughter. When they were younger, they all worked for me. They went to meetings. They probably got on people's nerves, but they have carried my bags, my cameras. They have been my videographers. You know, them little tots didn't have to show up, but a little bit, and they could go home. Sometimes they came in, wallering me in late. Everybody's been with me for a long time. No, and I'd be calling, like, you better get here. And then I take a picture of them. They have done registration. They have answered my phone. They have done a number of things until one of them is actually working with me in my econ now, building him a team and actually is my tax professional uh, for me. The other one um, 
when he left, he comes in my office and he's working up front with me, uh, pulling through the nail. And then my daughter just launched her own DJ business. And so, and then she's talking all that language out there. So all around this stuff, you know, and she's coming a my icon again. So all of this stuff is because these little tots have been with me since they were very young. And during the time that I took care of them, I did the income shifting. And that means I took that money they would normally get and I paid them. Okay. Some of, some of them didn't have to get the money in their hands. Now that's the part my kids never liked. When I told them that legally, I never had to put money into their hands. I had to just show the paper trail and do what I needed to do. Them jokers were sitting in a meeting one time and they were like, no, that ain't fair. To <laughs> yes, it is. It's my money. <laughs> so, and, uh, so there's a way to get that done. But tonight we want to talk about recording and just keep that under your belt and we don't come back and talk nothing about not anything but setting those kids up to work for you. So let's just say we pay a son or daughter $100. Who are we paying? We're going to pay Becky Lou Pace, okay? What are we doing? My daughter just laughed. <laughs> we got Becky Lou Pace that we're paying. And what are we paying her for? Um, uh, employee services, okay? Or whatever you want to name it. So where are we paying her? Um, actually, uh, commercial bank, okay? Now, I'm going to make note uh, that she got this payout uh, deposited for, uh, what you call it, administration and janitorial services. C contract. Okay. Now the thing about this is it's going to be recurring. Okay. I'm not going to sporadically pay them. Y'all catch a hint on this. So it's going to occur monthly payout of a hundred dollars. I'm going to go right over here. I'm going to set that up monthly and then I'm simply going to save. It. Okay. Now you have a full fledged um, worksheet that's being created for to keep you audit proof okay are y'all getting this let me know let me know how many y'all are still hanging on with me i hate to talk and be by myself i got about five more minutes i'm gonna give you i'm gonna wait even if you see the video late let me see if you're getting it oh we're getting it Okay, good. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love it when you're getting it. Hearts, tears. Don't put no angry faces. I'm just joking. <laughs> so, one other thing I need to show you guys, because this is important when it comes to your record-keeping differences, okay? I listen closely to this one. All right, great deal. So, hold that grandbaby of mine. I was trying to do this before she woke up. Okay, okay, let's talk about the difference between travel, great Vincent, travel, hang, okay, anything under travel, you guys, gives you a greater deduction, and it means that these are overnight expenses. Take a look at airfare, lodging, meals and entertainment, other parking, public transportation, travel, rental car, tips, and tips. Now, on this other I don't like to use anything with RS as an other. I like to define it. So I'm gonna go over here, something that my econ doesn't have on here, and I'm gonna create a new entry. I wanna do travel, okay? And I'm gonna do gas, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to my dashboard. I'm gonna open my entry. Uh, No, wrong thing. I'm gonna go back to the dashboard because I wanna show, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going right. So I'm going to my new expenses and I'm going to go down here to travel gas. Now, the reason I put this expense type in here is because when you are, are overnight doing business overnight, that means you spend the night and uh, somewhere. That means that to create deductions, you actually, instead of going to a uh, family reunion or class reunion or on vacation, you are now taking business trips and it's overnight. You've either used the plane or the bus or 
rode a horse, you know. <laughs> but the thing that you need to know is, is that gas and oil, transportation is different from travel gas. You have to use either or. You have to use a standard mileage or actual expenses to your vehicle to write uh, to make the difference. You cannot use both when you're writing off deductions for your vehicle. But if you have a vehicle under travel, the category of travel, you can write off both the mileage and the gas. In the run of a day where you conduct in business and you spend the night at home, your gas is gonna be up here at the transportation. If you go anywhere overnight, and you drive your vehicle, you're going to have both mileage and gas as a write-off. Y'all got that? Okay, so it's important that you log these in differently. Notice your meals and entertainment under travel. There's a different percentage to be written off for meals, okay, under travel than it is for meals and entertainment, okay? This is your business transacted in one 24 hour day. But if you spent the night on business, you would come to travel, meals and entertainment, because you're going to get a greater deduction for overnight. Let me know if you're getting it, okay? And so you're gonna record that. I like to add gas. I don't like to travel other because I like to put a name. If you were going to have cleaning, I would, and it was connected to travel, I would. You know, because like a lot of business people will go on business and they have suits. They will clean them while they are there so they can do uh, presentations and so forth. So then you're out operating business. If you got that done, put that, add you another tab, put travel, colon, uh, cleaning. Okay. Got that? Utilities. Great, Vincent. Utilities. Now, when you have utilities, notice. We do not have them separated as gas bill, electric bill, um, cable, which cable is not utilities, y'all. It's not utilities. It's lights, gas, and water. That's because you don't have to separate them because when we, uh, RS takes it and we put it as tax uh, preparers on your form, it's under one category and, it's, and it puts them all in one category. So if I got a gas bill, that's $58. I'm going to do Arcla Gas, okay, as who, uh, what monthly billing. Then I'm going to say Louisiana, okay, online, okay, payment. I'm, I'm going to put something like payment made online, okay? All right. Now, that payment is online but I have it that it is my gas bill, okay? All right, we're going to save it. I'm going to go back to my expenses, okay? I'm gonna go back to utilities. I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna put in the light bill, $350, okay? Power electric, I don't know, I'm just making up names, okay? Uh, light bill okay uh monthly light bill however you want to put it uh louisiana no arkansas i don't know i'm not putting who our folks is okay payment made online want to make sure light bill okay uh you can even if you're gonna see uh because see like i pull my light bill off at the end of the year you can go online and pull the whole year off and so i'm gonna say C 12 month uh, statement, okay? I'm just saying, if they audit me, I've got the proof in there. I've got that 12 month sheet that's showing my expenses. And so I'm giving them directions. A lot of times, if you give them directions, they ain't gonna go look for it. They might go look for one entry and say, oh, okay, they serious about this. They're not trying to fraud. I'm talking about in the eyes of RS. Now, you see why I told you to do categories? Now, as a tax professional, it is a no-no for you to just not categorize your stuff and just bring stuff lined up like this. Let me show you what it looks like. If you do not categorize things, 
this is what you get. We hate that with a passion because there's no totals. There's no, we, if there were more meals, I'd have to pull that, that customer's coattail. I'd have to tell them, go back and change this. Or we would sit here and charge you more because I've got to take categories and then I would have to calculate the total amount. This way, if you put category up, up here, categorize, we have the totals. Good, Vincent, it makes sense. Great, great, great. Now, if you notice at the bottom, we've got a grand total of our income. We have a grand total of our expenses. We've got a grand total of our mileage. You got auto number two mileage, which is separate, okay? Now, let's go and put it in, okay? Let's show you here, a mileage log. So you are building a mileage log. Sometimes when you are audited, what they want to do is they want to, that mileage is a stickler. So you want to record your miles. You want to record them properly. Okay. So you actually have a spreadsheet for that where you can just print out the mileage and it won't be no guessing games for whoever's auditing you. Now we're going to go over here. Here's what I like to No, we're not going to go right here. Profit and loss year to date. You're in business. When you're in business and you uh, want to go get an auto loan or, or a home loan, you might even want to get a business loan. They're going to ask you for a profit and loss statement. My con thought of everything. You are a business owner. So if you build this information, you want to go back and try to make up anything, and you might get an opportunity to include your profit and loss statement and show them that you're actually making money. This is not what we always want to see. Okay, a negative six oh seven ninety five. Okay, we actually want to see you profiting in your business without having to pay taxes, or a lot of them anyway. So you may operate your business five years or six or seven years uh, in the red because you're still building and you're doing things annually that is uh, moving you towards making that happen, but. We do want you to get to the point where you are having a, um, a healthy profit from it. And remember in the beginning, I said in order for you to be able to write off uh, deductions and cover that tax liability as your income grows, you must know your estimated tax liability. That calculator is there. I'm going to just simply put it in in just a minute and show it to you. Now let's look at your printable view. Bam. Okay, I'm going to reduce this so you can see. Now you've created a spreadsheet that you can simply print. You can print it either um, in landscape or portrait style, and you have your tax records. I hope you guys enjoyed this training as much as I enjoy training you, okay? And so then you actually have everything that you need. It's simple, guys. It's real simple, but don't make it hard. Your first year is in business. Do not make this a burden. Do what you can, um, you know, um, then turn around and grow and develop the more wisdom you, or the more knowledge you have, the greater wisdom you can exercise. I do see people in this business and in any other networking business, it gets so good telling everybody else how to do it that you leave your business undone. So let's not get caught leaving your own personal business undone, trying to share and make money, uh, and then you don't get the true concept about what it is. You know, don't be a hustler. Be a business owner and take care of your personal business because you actually come first in this matter, okay? I'm going to walk right on over here, and I'm going to type in... Uh, can y'all see my screen? Let's see if you see my other screen. Yeah, okay, you see my other screen. I'm just going to type in here, IRS, uh, uh, let's see, tax estimated, estimated tax liability calculator. Okay, I'm going to show you what everybody should have done by now. If y'all serious about your own personal finances, you will take the time. If you have to set aside 15 minutes a day until you get this right, you will take the time. You cannot work skipping over it. All I did was click, go straight to IRS. Y'all see that? And went to the tax withholding calculator. This is not the training. The training is on a video, and I did another one that's on here somewhere. It might even be 10. Okay? 
But this is important that you do this tax withholding calculator because y'all still gonna get some surprises because you haven't done your first words. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Let's see. Are there any questions? Why is this blinking for me? Are there any questions? Any questions? All right. If y'all like it, give me some hearts. Whoever's left on with me, give me some hearts. I see seven, but maybe it's more of you guys. Share it with your team. Um, yeah, share it with your team. And I'm not even so sure if you can't share it openly because this is the advantage of my econ is that as a business owner, you get the opportunity. People don't have, I'm, I mean, I'm actually showing people the software that is amazing that comes with all of the other stuff that we have. And so if that's something you want to do to let them know that we have mentors that train you, we have tax professionals that are here to mentor you and train you and professionals are a part of this business because of the meat, the structure. It's not just sales. It is strategy that creates the sales and that creates wealth for you. Sure. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, I don't really like all this training openly because I think it's a privilege for people. I think it's a privilege. So that's why y'all need to pay your monthly fees and it's a privilege to others. I'm not trying to teach them what you have the privilege to receive. So they do need to move forward so they can get with people that will help them. All right, that's all I have for tonight. If y'all don't have any questions, I love you. I'm glad you stopped by. We're going to move to, um, like Joseph is here, Chris is here. If I can get them on with me uh, to talk about this awesome uh, compensation, we're going to do that. We're going to do cash flow strategies. We're going to talk about credit. Guys, I'm so excited to go back in another way and talk to you guys about credit. And we're going to get together and get that done. <sighs> it's time to exhale. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, I, I guess I'll see y'all later. I enjoy you so much. I want to keep hanging, but we got to go.